Hi, this is the first video in the Linux Foo series, designed to take you from knowing nothing about Linux to knowing everything. This first episode will be looking at a bit of history, what Linux is, and what makes it so special. And the crosstalk on the bottom lane looks pretty bad this morning, mm, so you may have to take an alternate route. Next up on Make FM is... You could say Linux all started with a post made by Linus Torvalds to the comp.oz.minix Usenet group on the 25th of August 1991. He said he was working on a free operating system that was just a hobby and won't be big and professional like GNU. He had based it loosely on another OS called Minix and at that stage he thought that it probably never will support anything other than AT hard disks as that's all I have. By September that year he was uploading regular updates to the Helsinki University FTP servers by 1992, Linux finally had a GUI based on the X window system, and Linus changed from the kernel licensing from non-commercial use to GPL version 2. This same year saw the first of many fairly interesting debates, this one between Minix creator Andrew Tannenbaum and Linus over whether a monolithic or microkernel was better, with Tannenbaum stating that Linux is obsolete. By 1993, Linux distributions started to appear like Slackware and Debian. In 1996, Linus was bitten by a penguin at a zoo, and consequently the penguin became the very familiar mascot. By around mid-1998, tech giants started to announce support for Linux with IBM providing software patches. The following year, Red Hat was born as a public company. 2002 saw the start of a very long-running debate between Linus and GNU founder Richard Stallman over the fact that Linux contains binary blobs and therefore violates the GPL. In 2003, IBM ran the first Linux advertisement during a Super Bowl, and that same year there was the famous legal battle between IBM, Linux, and the SCO group who claimed they held the copyright to Unix. Then there were countersues between Novell and SCO. It was a real mess that lasted for years. By 2004, there was so much writing on Linux that new versions were being released every three months. In 2006, the GPL GNU Linux heated debate was still running, with the Linux Journal stating the reason for this being, Linus got the glory for what Stormon wanted to do. Even Tannenbaum joined in on the discussions. That same year, companies such as Microsoft and Novell started to consider Linux as competition and by 2007 the Linux Foundation was created in response to that. By 2010, Android, which runs the Linux kernel, was the most popular smartphone platform. These days, Linux runs on everything, from dishwashers, routers, printers, to SBCs and small embedded systems like the Raspberry Pi or Omega 2, to notebooks and desktops, to servers, to large data centers and geo-clustered applications. People are hacking Linux to run on SD cards that are actually running on the SD card, not just storing the file system, and even hard disk hardware. It is one of the most ubiquitous operating systems on the planet, second only to spiders. Spiders? So why is Linux so good? There are several reasons for this. Well, it's free, as in beer, and since it's free, it's very portable to any hardware. It's scalable from small devices to planet-wide clusters. Linux gives you many different ways of achieving the same thing, and it's free. Did I say free already? So what are the downsides? Well, there is a steep learning curve, and this is one of the reasons why most people don't like it. However, the caveat is that knowledge builds on top of previous knowledge. So rest assured, that steep learning curve at the start flattens off over time. So what makes Linux, Linux? One thing is for sure, and that is, Linux is a variant of the Unix operating system. There are many, many variants or distributions of Linux, but apart from a few differences, they all essentially work the same. These days, you have two main variants, which are defined by the package management system used. Dpackage, which is used by distributions such as Debian, Ubuntu, and Raspbian, and RPM, which is used primarily by Red Hat, but also by Fedora and CentOS. For embedded systems, Dpackage has become the most popular actually has become popular on desktops as well. Whereas servers within data centers tend to use Red Hat. Every distribution has its pros and cons, and like religion and politics has sparked numerous arguments over which is better. 
but what makes an OS a Linux OS? Fundamentally, the kernel used. If you are using the Linux kernel, then you can argue that you are running a Linux operating system. With Unix, there are two main software components, the kernel and user space. User space is referred to any code not running as part of the kernel, which includes such things as your web browser, mail client or desktop. The kernel does everything else and is the most important part. It allows many processes to run at the same time, also called preemptive multitasking, manages memory and handles inter-process communications for processes, handles devices, manages storage, and provides processes with a system call API. There has always been arguments over which parts of the operating system should be in the kernel and which parts in user space, but these main functions remain. That's it for this video. Check out the next video in the series where we cover the booting process, shell basics, and file system structure. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. And that's it for another episode. Don't forget to check out my website for further details, and thanks for watching.